that's a pisser, an absolute pisser. The Russian tank is a Russian squib at the minute. Morning guys, welcome back to New Zealand. Like every photographer, we've got a start point. What hooked us, what got us into the medium in the first place. Mine dates way back when I was a young fella. My old dad, bless him, he was a good one for hobbies. Fishing, stamp collecting, military badges, that sort of, all, all sorts of stuff. And then one day he came home and he brought a camera and he took a quick photograph of me and my sister. Disappeared under the stairs, came out half an hour later with a shiny 10 by eight black and white print. And that was it, mind blown. Could not believe what I was looking at. And ever since that, hooked on photography. Now what my dad did, he started from memory, his first series camera. I, I remember him having sort of little Polaroid cameras back in the day, Instamatics, that sort of thing. And then one day he came home, like I say, came home with this, what I at the time classed as a serious camera. And it was a Zenit TTL, an old Russian camera. Like my dad does, decided that uh, now he wants a better model. So he upgraded to a Minolta, I believe. And the old Zenit TTL was handed down to yours truly, which uh, at the time I was grateful of, but I didn't have a clue how to use it. Not a, not a Scooby. And I sort of ponced about with it, messed about pretending I was David Bailey, that sort of thing. That sort of got cast off in the mist of time. God only knows where that one's gone. And then I kind of did what my dad did and upgraded, upgraded, upgraded. And, and it, it, that was the start of my journey, really, in a nutshell. So now, here I am, quite a few years later, I'm starting to look back at old cameras. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying reconnecting with film photography. And I'm absolutely loving it. I'm just going to talk a little bit quieter, guys. I'm going to go quiet, actually, because there's a guy walking up here. I don't want to feel like a dick. Morning, mate. Oh, always. <laughs> Dodge that bullet. I am totally full of envy and awe that people who can walk around with a vlogging camera, talking into it without a care in the world. It's not me. It really is not me. That was the start of my journey, and I, I, I cannot thank my dad enough for giving me this passion for photography. My life's go-to, my life's rock. It's, it's everything. I love it to bits. So I'm reconnecting with old cameras, and I decided, I thought, hell, why not try and get a Zenit TTL, try and make some photographs with it. Looked on the local auction sites, couldn't find a TTL locally within New Zealand. Did drop on a Zenit 12 XP, which is, uh, I got it for a bloody snip actually, cheap as chips. So that is the subject of today's video. We're gonna head back to the van, we're gonna have a look at the camera, show you around it, slip a roll of film into it, then over the next couple of days, we're gonna head out and just make some photographs. There's 36 exposures on the roll, and we're gonna try and make 36 acceptable photographs. Don't know what yet, no idea. Let's go check out the tank. So welcome to the Zenit 12XB, affectionately or rather intimidatingly known as the Russian tank. It is a Soviet era 35mm SLR and it was made between 1987 and 1994. Now apparently on the back of the camera is a serial number, I don't know if you can see the serial number on there, but the first two digits of the serial number indicate the year of manufacture. In my case, this was made in 1987. If you get two zeros in the serial number, that indicates that it was owned or made for members of the Soviet Communist Party. Quite interesting stuff. When they call this thing the Russian tank, it is, it is built like a tank. It really is solid. It's, it weighs roughly about a kilogram, I believe, and it is an absolute beast of a camera. Very simple, but very, very well made by what I can see. It comes with the M42 lens mount, which means you can screw off the old lens, screw on new lenses. Now the M42 mount lenses are quite easy to get hold of and quite cheap as well. I've got a series of M42 mount lenses for my Pentax Spotmatic kit. So they're the Super Takamars. And I will at some stage be using a Super Takamar on here, just to give it a whirl. The lens that came with the camera is a Helios 58mm f2. By what I've read, these are quite well made, quite sharp lenses. And apparently, they give you some beautiful bokeh. Now, shutter speeds run from the 30th, which is the flash sync, 60th, 1 125th, 1 250th, 1 500th. There's also a bulb mode for long exposures. The aperture range is from f2 to f16. You've got to set the frame counter manually, which you do by spinning that little dial there. It's got a beautiful little sound to it. I quite like it. There is an inbuilt light meter. The battery you insert in there, the battery's dead on this camera. I'm not bothered about that because you can use it fully manually. So I'll be recording the light as I do with a handheld light meter, which is the Sekonic Flashmate L308B, I believe. 
and that's quite a quite a nice simple easy to use reliable light meter you can also use the sunny 16 rule for this particular shoot we're going to be using a roll of rolly rpx 400 black and white film this camera also has a built-in self timer like most cameras so you just cock your shutter set the timer arm engage the button and i think it's about 16 seconds where's away where's away where's away and then just about ready to do the business you're just about in position bang there you go so let's throw a roll of film into the camera to open the camera back lift this little arm here pop it up all you do is slot your slot your film into there drop down the locking arm scroll across insert into one of the take-up slots and start winding on making sure that your film is seated between the guide rails okay that's looking like it's traveling quite nicely just close that then we set the frame counter to zero like so and now we are charged and ready to roll that is that there's not much else to tell you about this camera she's a beast an absolute beast the soviet era russian tank she is an absolute rock all right let's go out and shoot <laughs> of days later time to unload the film and this is the first time bear in mind I've ever done this on this camera you lift the shutter button housing no you don't no you don't actually Paul you press down you see that little collar around the oh Jesus when you press that down it engages something you lift this handle here and then you rewind there's a little little arrow there telling you which way to rewind and then you simply rewind and you should hear there you go and that is now winding freely easily that is rewound so now to get the film out of the camera just simply raise this handle door pops open absolutely slams open actually remove it from the camera close the camera door there we have a fully exposed really hopefully roll of rolly rpx 400 black and white film now we can develop the film i decided to load two films into this tank process them both at the same time the exact same film one from the shoot that i'm doing at the moment on the zenit on the russian tank the other images are for the are for a video I shot using the Olympus 35 SP. Beautiful, beautiful camera. In this wee tub, I have got Ilford ID11 film developer. This is stock solution, so we're going to be using it at stock solution because if I dilute it, obviously you get more bang for your buck out of diluting it. But I don't really develop that much film, and it does go off. 290 mils per roll. There's two rolls in here. 
which makes 580 mil, 20 degrees. So look, we're going to develop the film for eight minutes. This is stock bath, Ilford Rapid Fixer, and we'll give that three or four minutes just to do its thing. Okay, fixing time done, washing time next. So all I'm doing, clean fresh water, being in a van, there's limited, there's limited amount of water. So uh, I just keep giving it a really good soak. Just put the fixer away for another time. This fixer lasts really well. I've done about 10 rolls so far with this solution and it's still crystal clear. More water. Then just for the last little bit of the wash, I put just a smidge of detergent in there. Washing up liquid, that just acts as a drying agent. And it cleans my tanks off as well. Two birds, one stone. And he thinks that's had long enough. Let us see. I'm not sure which film's gonna come out first. Hopefully we've got something on here. Oh, we have, we have. This is the film that I've shot today, actually. Looks like we've got a full roll, fairly well exposed. Negatives. Is this today's? No, this is the first film. So that's the film that I shot with the Oli SP35. That looks quite cool, actually. We've got a beautiful day today. So we should be able to get these dry fairly quickly. This is a tail of two rolls. The first roll, which I shot on the Olympus 35SP, has come out absolutely beautifully. The second roll that I shot on the Zenit 12XP has come out shite. No, they've not, they've not even come out, to be honest. It's developed okay, because we've got the name of the, the manufacturer's name and the, the frame numbers. They've come out okay on the edges. Very, very little else on there. Very little. I can make out little bits, but so thin. Unbelievable. Now that leads me to believe that either the shutter's not working or the aperture's not working. Either way, that's a pisser, an absolute pisser. The little Zenit, the Russian tank, is a Russian squib at the minute. Fuck. I've looked at the camera and found out what went wrong. Now if you look at this camera, this is a Minolta X300. Advance the film. Hit the shutter, the mirror lifts up, stays open for the desired amount of time, and then closes. Everything is good. Let's try the Russian tank. Advance the film. The shutter opens. The mirror does not lift. It does nothing. If the mirror doesn't lift, light can't get through to expose the film so basically that camera's dead now I dare say that I could get it repaired is it worth it I don't think so in the meantime I have got a Helios 58 millimeter f2 lens that will fit on my uh, Pentax kit so uh, not all is lost apart from that roll of film which I'm absolutely gutted about but anyway that's my own mistake I should have checked the camera out before I loaded it with film and uh, went out shooting live and learn live and learn very slowly.